It's day six. We're getting towards the end of mid spring, and we don't have any real jobs to do. So we're going to take a little bit of a, an explore around, and maybe pick up the old contract job here and there. Hello again. I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to Deutz Farm here on Garala. So yeah, as I say, we don't really have a lot to do today. Uh, most of our stuff is still in its initial stages of growing. You can see these are our canola fields over here. We've got this big field over here. Still hasn't started growing. Uh, that field over there hasn't started growing. It's still too cold for us to go ahead and plant our soybean. Uh, the ground temperature is currently 6 degrees. Uh, it's not even warm enough for sunflowers yet or oilseed radish. You know, uh, we need to be in day 7 before we can at least put our soybean into the ground and even then we're going to have to wait for the temperatures to warm up before we can actually then see it start to grow. So we're kind of at a bit of a an impasse at the moment. We've got you know, no real jobs that need to be done but one thing I have done overnight is I have added in a couple of greenhouses to try and give us a little bit of extra stuff to do and I want to get us ready to uh, start considering animals as well. So we're going to take our little agro star down to the market, down to the store. Uh, we have a water trailer that's ready and waiting for us. And I'll show you where the greenhouses are. There's only two of them, just a couple, but it's just another little thing that we can do to help pass some of the time on each day we can make sure that our greenhouses have water at, to get them started and then when we do met, sort of move into cattle we can look at getting some manure in there or if we go into pigs then uh, we can add manure from the pigs as well I am very tempted to actually go ahead and purchase a few pigs they're not that expensive at the moment they're just a little over 3000 which you know 3000 is their base price but it does mean we are going to have to spend an awful lot of money on pig food until we have the relevant crops to actually feed them and as we don't have any root crops for, you know sort of in the ground anywhere at the moment we would still either need to not they would still not have full 100% food fulfillments if we went with uh, just regular food or we would have to continue spending money on pig food just to top up that last couple of percent of the uh, root crop which is a horrendously expensive thing to do to waste all that pig food just to fill up one little tiny bar that has a very very low requirement so I don't know I don't know if I want to do pigs just yet but we're here at the store you can see there we have our blue water trailer this is the Joskin liquid trans this is the modded uh, trailer here this one won't just take water this would also take uh, fuel and slurry and fertilizer and uh, you know even milk on PC as well so I do really like this trailer it's a little bit cheaper than the standard in-game Aquatrans and it has uh, a slightly larger capacity as well so it's uh, <laughs> it's a win-win all round really um, as you can see we've got some water just here I'm just gonna quickly back this into there need to find a, a, a more suitable refill point somewhere else on the map but we'll use this one for now there we go oh I've never seen a car use the garage before I did not expect that at all <laughs> I don't know where he came from but I've never ever seen a, ga a car in here before I kind of want to wait now and see if another car's going to either spawn in there or, or do a drive through in there. Where the hell did that guy come from? Oh yeah, look. Look at that. They do a little drive-by through the garage. That is so cool. <laughs> Never noticed that before. Ah, uh, we just knocked over a trash can. <laughs> Whoops. We're having a very uh, eventful start to the day here. Uh, 
And there's something else I noticed as well, which I didn't actually spot on my map tour. If we drive along here, I don't know if it's going to do it at this time of day. I know at night time, you can hear music around here. It must be a night time thing. But uh, there is the opportunity to actually hear music around there. We've gone too far. There's our greenhouses there, look. So we need to turn around. I'm, I'm just kind of... <laughs> I've been thrown off by that petrol station. <laughs> so we'll do a little loop around here. Pop back out again. All right, so this is where we want to turn off, just down here. And you can see I've added in a couple of the small buildings. So these two sheds here, these are from the uh, uh, Medicine Sans Frontier pack, the uh, the mods that were done for Doctors Without Borders. I've added both of these in, uh, just one for a bit of scenery and the other one to give us somewhere to actually store the water trailer over here. And then we have our two tomato greenhouses. I went with these ones because they have that nice sort of old wooden kind of feel. They just fitted, in my opinion, a little bit better than, uh, than the other ones. Plus, these ones can actually be put right up against each other, as you can see. Whereas, we can't do that with the mod cucumber ones. They just don't like going too close to each other. So that's 2,000 litres of water in that one. Oh, we have a, a great demand for wood chips for another 18 hours. What is the price of wood chips like at the moment? <sighs> Not great. I was thinking maybe we could do perhaps go and do a little bit of wood chipping to meet that demand. The price isn't great, but I suppose there's nothing to stop us from doing that. Let's tag this uh, second water trailer. Let's walk water butt. There we go. We're not going to uh, have a whole fleet of greenhouses all over the map. There, are, there aren't really many suitable locations for us to actually put these things in. Uh, but I just wanted to have a, a couple. It just felt like a it would be something that you would expect to see, uh, and b you know it seemed like a good location to put them. You know this little concreted area around the back here. It just screamed out for a couple of greenhouses. So we'll leave our water trailer there. We're good for another three Phillips, or another three individual greenhouse Phillips with that there. And I've been having a little bit of an explore around the map in some places, just trying to figure out where everything is and what everything is. I don't think I actually remember coming in here before. So I'm just going to take a quick look in here. No, no, these are painted doors, and they won't open. I just got thrown because I saw these ones open here and I thought, have we got an open area here? And, and we don't. <laughs> it's the simple answer. I mean, we've got uh, yeah, just a little bit of a scenery area over here. Uh, one thing I do want to show you, though, something else I spotted, is a familiar face on this map. We've seen him before. I suppose we should probably pick up the trash can as well. Uh, which is the bottom bit? There it is. That's too heavy. We can't. All right, never mind. <laughs> we will drive away quickly, <laughs> leave the scene of the crime, and deny all knowledge. But just opposite the farm, obviously, we have our basket. Well, we have a basketball court. It's not ours. We don't own it. But there is a basketball court right opposite our farm, and. Uh, Around the, the side of that is also a little playset, you know, a little swing area, and uh, and a slide. And I noticed a familiar face. So I'm just going to point that guy out to you. It's uh, the guy from 
uh, Alt Altenstein. I like to call him Old Man Gunter. It turns out he is actually uh, a character from the Stalker video game. I've never played the game. Never even heard of it before. Somebody actually pointed out to me in the comments of of, uh, of Altenstein. But, uh, yeah, he is an actual character. Apparently quite a main character from the Stalker uh, video game series. And here he is, look. Just, uh, <laughs> just sitting here on the edge of the slide. He's followed us all the way across from Altenstein. He's come with us. I had no idea this guy here was, was here either. And it just... Boom, there he is. So, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a surprise. I was doing a little bit of a drive around this morning before we started recording, just to have a quick explore, see where I could put those greenhouses. And I spotted him, and I thought, I have to make sure I point him out. It just seemed fitting that we find him on this map, having had him on the last uh, Deutz Farm map as well. So, there we go. So, we've got our greenhouses up and running. Uh, they've got a little bit of water, enough to keep them going for a couple of days. Let's move out of the main traffic. So, now we need to do a little bit of contract work, basically. Or, we could do some wood chipping. Now, if we do some wood chipping, it's a question of where do we do the wood chipping. There's quite a few different forestry areas. There's one up here, and obviously we know we've got the maze that sits off the back here. I don't really want to attack that area. Uh, we've got a forest over here near the BGA. Uh, and we've obviously got this big forest here. And this big forest over here. But they're not actually as big as they look. I mean, these brown areas, this is where the, you know, you'd expect most of the trees to be. But they're actually quite sparsely planted in here. They're not that frequent. So there's no real really really dense heavily wooded areas I mean perhaps this one but it's a very small area over here and I kind of like the scenic effect of those forests so I don't really want to get into actually chopping down much of these forests I kind of want to leave them as they are because they're nice scenic pieces on the map so that leads me to think that maybe what we should do is we should actually create a forestry area. We should create an area somewhere on the map where we can actually go in and start deforesting it at a later point. So that means we need a field that we can basically plant on and, and create a forest. Now, I'm not sure where would be the great, the best place to do it, but I do kind of like the idea of uh, something that's not too far away from the sawmill because there's no train access there's, yeah, we can't transport logs by the train, which is a real shame. I think that would have been fantastic if we could do that. Um, because it would have been, I think, would have been great to have a forest up here and then use the train to transport the logs down and around and then bring them out to here, perhaps. But unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity to do that. Um, so maybe we could create a, a forest somewhere around this area. Um, I don't know. Let's go take a look at some fields over there and uh, and see if we can find something that might be suitable. It does mean that uh, we are potentially going to have to spend quite a big amount of money, which I'm a little loath to do. Especially considering it's going to take quite some time for those fields, to, well, you know, those trees to actually grow. But I think it would be quite interesting as well to actually see those trees grow through seasons and see how long it takes for them to reach full maturity. So, yeah, we're going to head over to the forestry area and we're going to take a look and see if we can find somewhere that might be suitable for us to actually plant a load of trees. Okay, so I've been kind of touring the map a little bit to try and find what I think is going to be the perfect field for us to actually set up a forest. And it's not just a case of location, but it's also... The field itself, how big the field is, you know, uh, whether it's a field that's going to be useful in terms of joining into another one to create a larger crop field, if it's a useful grass field that I don't want to get rid of. And I think this is probably the one we're going to go with, field 47. So on this side, we have this path which we can't get rid of. We need to keep that path there. So uh, that is a, a, a kind of permanent barrier there. But we also have this huge 
sort of uh, cliff bit just here as well this huge embankment really steep embankment so we couldn't go that way further with the field even if we wanted to and now that runs all the way up this side obviously on that end we've got the main road so there's no expansion that way either so it's blocked off there at this end we're blocked off because we have our spinnery and grain cell point so again we have a natural border and, and we have this pathway as well so we have you know another stop point just there and again on this side we have the path that runs down here and then we have another really steep embankment just here and if we just climb the embankment obviously we've got a field along here uh, you can see then we have a water feature just here with a little jetty and this huge kind of potholed area just here as well which isn't suitable for anything at all so we've got complete separation on, from this field on all four sides. The only point where this field could possibly be linked up with that one would be this bit just here, which doesn't really seem worth it. May as well keep that as a separate field. I think this field here would be absolutely perfect to turn into a forest. Now, we're going to have to do a lot of work to do that. We need to clear off all this stubble, first of all. Uh, then we need to plant grass across most of this field we need to create some dirt path areas and uh, a bit of a clearing area and then we need to obviously plant a load of trees in here as well and uh, I'm for you know for you know realism's sake in terms of the visual look I'm going to actually put some manure on the field in places as well to try and give a different ground texture and uh, to simulate the, the floor of our custom forest. So there's a, quite a bit of work involved in actually making this into a forest, but I think this is the perfect size. It's not too big that it's going to become absolutely dominant, but it's big enough <clears throat> that we can come in here and we can do a fair bit of logging and we can work it for lumber and we can work it for wood chips as well. We're not going to run out of trees too quickly. We can plant it in areas and stages as well so that we can have you know some growing at different rates it doesn't have to be a case of just you know all growing at once so we can plant this in sections and have different areas of uh, this sort of you know air of this field area uh, all growing at different heights so while one set of trees is being worked uh, more are growing in and then once say we've got a section over here once that area is done, we can then move to this one, which should then be fully grown. And then once that's done, this area will should be fully grown. And then this area should be fully grown. And while they're growing, we can go back in and we can replant in this area. So it gives us a chance to sort of naturally cycle through sections of this forest that we're going to create. So I'm back in the uh, Agrostar. I've hired a worker to do our cultivating for us. I'm not quite sure why I ended up putting the Agrostar away because I realised as soon as I did, I was going to need it for something else. So I've leased some equipment, as you can see. Uh, ooh, a little bit of lag there. It might be coming from the uh, the Massey mod there, possibly. Or maybe it's from these. Ah, it's from these. You can tell that's where the frame drop is. Um, so we've leased a farm tech manure spreader because we need a worker to spread manure for us. We don't have any manure at all because we don't have any animals uh, and we can't buy manure. But what we can do is we can hire a worker and get him to buy the manure and then he can spread that on the field for us. Uh, so that's a clever little workaround. If you have no manure whatsoever, you can still spread manure, but it will cost us a bit. And that's going to change the base texture of the ground. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to plant grass, but not everywhere. It's going to go down in, in quite a few places. And the reason I've gone with this one here is because it's quite long. It's five meter working width, but it's very, very thin in terms of its width. So it doesn't put down a large track. This is great if you want to create the illusion of a pathway with grass growing in between tire tracks. Uh, so I'm going to be using that for this all this for that uh, and then obviously we've leased our planter because we need to plant some trees so I'm going to grab the uh, manure spreader first of all I'm going to take this over to the field 
and we're going to get some manure spread once the field has been cultivated. I don't want to do it first because you know it's just going to cultivate that manure into the field, which means you know it's not going to be there. So we're going to, we'll have to do it again. Let's see if we can see the worker actually. Someone's just dropped casually dropped a nugget on the footpath there. One of those honest people. It's there, and they they know it's not theirs. They haven't picked it up and claimed it as their own. And we can't see a thing because <laughs> he's down underneath that uh, embankment there. We should see him in a moment, running up and down the field. Our little para harrow. There he is, just turning at the other end of the field. So, what is the working width on this thing? Let's have a look. Working width is 8 metres, so not that wide. So, I'm going to want to be about there, I think. It's probably a little bit close, but uh, better safe than sorry. Uh, so, uh, we need to go into settings, and uh, we need our worker to buy manure for us. Oh yeah, look at that, judge that pretty much perfectly. And that's going to be the kind of ground texture inside our forest. It's not the same as a dark patch of ground that's been cultivated. It's lighter, it's got a different texture of brown over the top. Uh, and this way we can use a cultivator to then make a path through the forest, through the different sections of the forest with a cultivator. And we're going to use a different one, we're going to use a smaller one for that. Uh, so we've got a little bit more control because we'll need to manually do that. And uh, we can then draw our pathway through. And of course we can plant grass over sections of this manure and the manure will disappear where we've planted the grass but it will still show through everywhere else. So again, it's going to help create that illusion of a forest floor, hopefully. That's kind of the plan. So, I mean, we did this before on uh, Mustang Valley with not too bad results but obviously we weren't having... <clears throat> we didn't have green grass on that map. We had desert grass which then when you planted grass looked a bit different and a bit weird and it didn't quite come off the way I was hoping plus the contrast between the very very light colored sandy kind of floor of the map against you know dark cultivated soil was too extreme so again it didn't quite work the way I was hoping it would uh, because there is less of a contrast in color between the green of the grass and the brown of the cultivated soil we should, hopefully, be able to get away with it a little bit better. Let's change to grass. There we go. And off we go to start putting some grass down. This is pretty much going to be our job for the day, is to create the basis of this forest. And we probably won't end up planting trees through the whole thing as I said I want to try and stagger the growth a little bit so we'll plant a bunch of trees today and then we'll probably plant some more trees in summer and then some more in autumn and then maybe even some more in winter as well we'll try and stagger them so we have uh, trees coming in at different times of the year so that you know if we need to we'll always have some logging available if we need to kill some time or if we have a great demand that we want to try and take advantage of uh, wood chips for example so that's the cedar brought over now I'm going to jump back in and take control of the cultivator again and make sure that everything is looking nice and smooth just clean up this edge I want the ground texture to all run in the same direction. A 
it will make it easier to distinguish the pathway that way when the pathway changes directions There we go. Right, so I have got a lot more of this cultivating to do, so I will catch up with you in a little while. So I'm just about done with the uh, cultivating. Just got a, uh, a pass left, maybe a thin strip on the edge afterwards to tidy up. But I've done everything else on the field. I've kept it as clean as I possibly can. And as straight as I possibly can. I should hopefully be able to get all of this in one go. This harrow is pretty noisy. But it's awesome though. I do really enjoy using this thing. Oops. Whenever I try and do a scenic shot from a different angle, I always end up going wide and missing a strip somewhere. There we go. His teeth. They are vicious. You would not want to get your hand caught in that. Very nice. Right, so uh, we've cultivated the field. We need to get the manure spread on that so we can get our worker hired again. I'm going to need to get him to do some weird bits and we might not get full coverage so areas where we can't we'll definitely be planting grass but I'll see what I can do to make sure that we get everything covered the way I want it because we're ultimately at the mercy of the worker for this bit obviously we have no manure in here at all so we can't manually make any touch-ups where it's going to get interesting and also awkward. Hiring workers in short little bursts before they uh, <laughs> come up against an obstacle and stop. having a really uneven ground doesn't help when it comes to trying to position equipment like this but it does add to that sort of authentic kind of uh, forest floor feel by having very uneven bumpy terrain there's another tree in the way I'm not having much luck <laughs> with these passes but I always knew that this was going to be the tricky part I do enjoy doing things like this, you know, just adding a custom element to the farm. There's very little we can do in some respects on console. You know, we don't have access to Giants Editor. We can't make, you know, significant changes to uh, properties of things or, uh, or 
you know, remove bits and bobs from maps or add other bits in. But what we can do is we can be a little bit creative with some of the other things. So the way we put placeables down, the way we build custom forests and custom farms, you know, uh, it's it's quite in, uh, heartening to see just how creative people can be on console. I mean, I'm not the most creative of people. My Asperger's kind of limits my creativity, so I tend to have, you know, just one kind of, I you know, I have an idea, but I can only really see, ever see one way of doing it. And it might not always be the best way of doing things. But I don't have that kind of creative spark to come up with some really weird and wonderful creations. I do try and sort of exercise that uh, that part of my brain where I can. You know, games like uh, City Skylines and uh, Railway Empire are quite helpful in that respect. They do allow me to kind of try out things that I wouldn't necessarily think of. help me be a little bit more creative. And that's one of the things I do love about uh, video games is the ability to kind of escape the confines of your own reality. Not just in terms of uh, you know, you know, a game like GTA where you can just go out and do whatever you want with absolutely zero repercussions. You know, a great way to sort of blow off steam and things like that. But things like this as well where you know there are some you know some parts of you know my life that are quite tricky because of my Asperger's and video games help me to be you know a lot more comfortable in a social setting whereas uh, in in real life that's you know a, a challenging thing for you know someone with my condition you know tend to be quite isolationist tend to be quite uh, introverted. I don't like hanging out in large crowds with people. Uh, I can feel very uncomfortable in long conversations. Especially if it's something I don't have much of a, a, a topic knowledge on. And I can feel very, very uncomfortable in those situations and tend to shy away from them. With video games, you know, obviously they're a topic that I have a bit more information and a bit more knowledge on, so I can engage more actively and I, I'm not in a crowd of, of people with lots and lots of eyes looking at me so I can I can talk things through and I can explain things without feeling any kind of you know social pressure in that respect so you yeah, know video games are really really helpful you know in situations like this they really do enable me to kind of grow a little bit Once I step away from the console, I become a completely different person. Oh, we got some bad weather coming in. You can see it's starting to rain. It's getting very dark. And our worker is stopped in an awkward place again. This is going to be a lot of back and forth along here. I want to try and get complete coverage on the field where I can, but if I can't, as long as I can get good coverage, that's the most important thing. I can always, as I say, I can plant grass in the areas where I can't get you know, this manure down. And if it ends up looking pretty poor and not looking the way I hope it's going to look, then I can always just plant over the top of it. That's the other great thing about using this manure like this. It's not a, uh, a permanent decision. You know, it's not going to stay like this. You know, we can still act on the field while the trees are saplings because they don't have collisions while they're saplings. So this is something that we can do to try out a texture change on our field and if it doesn't work the way we like or in, you know, the way it was intended there's nothing to stop us from just going back and uh, correcting that. So uh, I'm going to carry on spreading some manure on this field and I'll check back in with you once we are pretty much done with that.
Uh, there we go. That's almost completely full coverage. It's been quite tricky in a few places. Some bits haven't been able to be uh, sort of spread. A little patch just here, I think. Yeah, let's see if we can quickly tag that bit. It might be too small. We'll try. All right, there we go. Able to get that bit. There's a little patch on the edge there, but I can't really do anything about that, I don't think. Too close to the road, I'm guessing. Yeah. Maybe if I turn around, I might be lucky. No, it's not going to let me do that bit. Okay, so we've got mainly the whole field covered, but not quite. So now I need to start thinking about where I want the road to be. I say the road, you know, the kind of pathway through the forest. I do want to have some some kind of route through here, I think. I also need to get a really small cultivator of some kind as well. I hope there's a really, really tiny one in here. That's three meters, that's a little bit too big. That's the smallest I can get, I think, is a three meter cultivator. Yeah, there is um, this that I could use as well, a 1.1 meter plow. I've got a 1.9, that's too big, but we've got this little uh, 3K12 here that we could possibly use. Hmm, that would give us a plow texture. I suppose actually a plow texture might work. Yeah, let's lease one of these. Uh, so we're done with this, actually. We can take this back to the store. So let's take this back. It's just cloudy. I thought it was going to rain, but it's just cloudy. That's good be even harder to see with rain. So I'm going to go pick up the plough, which is just over there. It's not far to go to the store. And then I'll meet you back on the field. Okay, plough is connected, and the eagle-eyed of you may well have spotted that I didn't actually connect up to the uh, manure spreader. I got here and then I dropped an, uh, something and I thought it was the manure spreader and it was my weight. <laughs> so, um, yeah, whoops. There it is. We'll just pretend that we brought that back and we'll never speak of it again. Uh, we have the plough with us so <laughs> we're going to make our way back to the field. I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. Flee the scene of the crime. Go. So uh, I need to find a good entrance point where we can uh, bring our equipment on from. And I'm thinking we do that just here in this clearing. I think that might be the possible best location where the ground is a little bit flat. So. Uh, this is where it's going to get interesting. Now, it's a one meter plow width, but it doesn't mean I'm only going to get a single furrow. I am going to get, you know, two furrows in places. And this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky, so... What I'm going to need to do is actually allow create fields. Like this. I want to kind of bring the pathway in. Problem is, unless we actually have a, you know, a dedicated turn, it doesn't look quite right. Now, we are going to be trimming away the edges of this a little bit. With grass. But the idea is to try and create the illusion of tyre tracks. Now, obviously, that's quite wide. It's a bit too wide to be an actual tyre track, but it gives us something to work with.
and we're going to be planting grass in the middle for the most part. Get my lights on so I can see a little bit better. angle I'll have to lift and turn around and try and complete that from the other side like that so we've got the illusion of tracks just there and now I want to have tracks obviously running this way as well Turn off create fields now, just in case I make a mistake by driving outside the edge. And I think personally the trick to creating a path through a forest is not to have a straight line. Nature doesn't tend to do straight lines. It tends to twist and turn and wind around a bit. I did toy with the idea of creating a clearing in here, but I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and do that or not. I might do. Let's get the other track in place first of all. Then we can try and be clever with the cedar. Hopefully you'll see the effect that I'm trying to achieve. Hopefully it doesn't look stupid. I have this idea in my head of how this is going to look. Whether or not I can actually achieve that look is another matter. Hopefully we can actually pull this off and it can look reasonably convincing. A little bit too narrow just through here. I need to widen this out a touch. Right, so we have basis of our dirt track. Let's uh, switch over to this. And this is where it's going to be tricky. I'm going to do this from the front because hopefully I'll actually have a little bit more control this way. So the trick here is to basically lower it in place, turn it on, and then just move it ever so slightly. Then lift it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm getting confused with my finger controls. I need to actually uh, hook this on the back. I keep going, going, meaning to go forward with the cedar, which is essentially reversed with, with the cedar. I'm pressing the direction wrong, so slightly overdone it with the grass in the middle just there, but I can kind of get away with that. doesn't need to be a perfect path but it doesn't want to be too wide those tracks don't want to be too wide I have a little bit of dirt there like that you can see we're trying to get this illusion of dirt tracks with the uh, the placing of grass between them Not a perfect science, this, but it kind of works. And this is why I wanted to use this cedar, because as you can see, it's got quite a small footprint. I mean, in terms of width, it's about right for what it is I'm trying to do. Now, we won't see the full effects of this for quite some time because we've got to wait for this grass to start growing. So it'll be a couple of days before this grass starts to show through in the middle of these tracks and along the borders of the tracks once we do the borders as well. But you'll get the basic idea. And hopefully, as I say, it's going to look pretty good. what I want to try and do is just every now and again in places I just want to leave a little patch of that sort of uh, manure texture showing so it's not a completely solid line of grass I want there to be little bits of and little breaks in it from place to place let's put a slightly bigger break in just here go so that's kind of the effect that I was going for and then what I'll do is I'll try and put grass along the edge as well to thin out these tracks a touch as well but before I do that I want to kind of work this area a little bit more very slow and arduous process putting in these little bits like this but like I say I'm hoping the effect is going to be pretty good I don't have the ability to just drop a dirt road texture in I have to kind of create one myself and I don't like just drawing a line with a cultivator it tends to look quite bland I really wish the Giants would allow us to make dirt paths. I know on PC there's a, a, ro a, a roller mod where you can actually just roll a different texture over the ground so you can put down dirt, you can put down grass, you can put down um, concrete. You know, I'd love it if we had something like that on console but I can't see that being added into this. Maybe we'll get something like that in Farming Sim 19. I really really hope so. Uh, obviously we're getting some screenshots appearing um, it is the um, the What Next event from Focus Home going on in France at the moment. Uh, so that covers you know, everything that Focus Home published. So obviously Giants are the developers, Focus Home are the publishers of uh, Farming Simulator. So Farming Simulator are there. They've also got uh, Mudrunner Spin Tires in their uh, umbrella to Focus Home. 
So we'll start getting some information through on that this week as well, I hope. There is a DLC announced for uh, Spin Tires, a free DLC, which is going to add a new map called The Valley. And uh, three new vehicles and some new attachments in the garage for those vehicles. Uh, and that is going to be coming out sometime in February, so we hopefully will get details of that this week as well. Uh, and there was something else as well that I was uh, waiting for from Focus Home. I can't remember what the other one is now. But there was something else that Focus Home Interactive, you know, uh, manage in their sort of uh, gaming library, and I can't remember what it is. But that was something else that I was looking forward to getting some updates on this year as well. Ah, I had a worker by mistake. I can correct that with the plow, but actually, no, I might leave that like that. That's not too bad. Kind of got away with it just there. There we go. This is going to take a couple of days for us to do this. I mean, so we've almost run out of time, not just in the episode, but also in the day. It's half past five already. So I think what we'll do is we'll split this up. And we, we're still, what, day six? We've still got three more days of spring to go before we can really start, you know, mowing and harvesting. So we've got plenty of time to kill until we're in a position where we can actually start doing, you know, field work again. So, yeah, we'll probably come back and do a little bit more work on this forest again tomorrow, try and get it finished off. But uh, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and continue sort of dabbing bits of grass along in here, and then I'll catch up with you in a little while once it's done. Okay, so I've kind of just about finished at least doing the central bit. So this is what it looks like. Let me zoom out a bit to try and give you a better I, I kind of ideal of what it is as I drive over it. So you can see we're not that far off being actual kind of tyre tracks. It's a little wide in a couple of places. We're going to try and roll that back a little bit. And I'm going to trim some of those edges off just a touch where I can in places as well. But... Vehicle width wise, it's not too bad. Obviously, this is a small tractor, but some of the uh, forestry equipment is going to be a bit bigger. So, you can see we've got this kind of grass that's been planted down the middle here. The, the tracks are about the right kind of width in total for it to be a pathway. It's a little bit kind of uh, thin over here, which is deliberate because obviously, this is a, a turning point. So. This is where you know, vehicles are going to be sort of going across at different angles. It's going to wear out that bits of grass just there. We go down this way. Again, it's a bit wide in places. We'll thin that out a little bit on the opposite side. But we've got a nice little path coming out to this area over here. We can have some trees over this side. And we can mix and match some of the trees as well. We don't have to plant nothing but fir trees. We could put in some scenic breaks as well with some oak trees, maybe. Or maybe even some pine trees. <clears throat> and then we've also got a nice little workable area over here. Again, we've got this really clean straight edge. We're going to be uh, roughing that edge up a bit with, uh, with grass planting. So it's not just this straight line of uh, field along here. There'll be some scenic breaks along there. And then we've got a large area over here, and I may well do another little split, so I may uh, bring some road off sort of uh, this way into this area over here a bit, and then also do the same sort of out in the direction of the tractor a little bit, so it kind of forks and splits in this area. That's kind of the plan. I don't want to go over the top with the dirt path, but... Uh, I do want to have a little bit of variety and uh, a little bit of a kind of a snaky route through here. And what I am also thinking of doing is um, putting an exit ramp or an exit route sort of over here at this end of the forest as well that will connect back up this way so that we can attack it and approach it from different angles and different positions. That's kind of the plan. I've got a big chunk here that I didn't actually see. We'll have to make sure that gets grassed out. Um, but yeah, there we go. That is kind of where we are right now. It's a little bit late. 
and we don't have great light at the moment so I'm going to end the episode here we'll come back and we'll do some more work on this tomorrow uh, we'll also check to see whether or not we need to do any fertilizing tomorrow if we do we'll get that out the way first and then we'll come back and we'll continue working on this custom forest area so uh, that's it from me thanks for watching i am jim bob and we'll be back with another episode of deutz farm here on gorala with seasons very soon Thank you.